Hey there, boys and girls, and welcome back to another episode of the Bait Podcast. Today, we've got a special episode. No Dendi for you, but we're going to dive in deep to one of the support players currently on the Bait roster. And one of the players you probably don't know that much about. I sure as hell don't know much about him, and I'm excited to learn. Uh, Five Up Dota is with us. Five Up, buddy, how you doing? Uh, I'm pretty good. What's about you? You know, I'm doing pretty well myself, buddy. I've been recently learning the carry role as someone who's played almost exclusively support for the last five or six years of his life. And I have to say, it's a hell of a lot of fun doing something a little bit different inside the Dota universe. I know that feeling. I was playing a lot of mid lane as well back in the days at solo queue. Really? I so was, yeah. did you aspire to be a mid laner? Like, did you ever like want to be a support? Because that is, you're currently the four in, in bait. Mm, it depends. I felt like I felt like I'm pretty good at mid, but the thing is, my hero pool was super limited at mid lane. I was always playing uh. these kind of flashy heroes like Pango, Shaker, <laughs> Earth Spirit, and like one and a half year ago, I was like, okay, I need to change something. Like mid lane is cool and fine for publics, but I want to play competitive, and then I need to change something in my position as well. Mm -hmm. So how do you like the support role playing competitive? Is it uh, satisfying enough? Is it uh, as challenging as you'd like? Do you, do you miss getting to play those flashy heroes regularly? Uh, I actually like it a lot. It always depends what hero I play, but let me say 90% of the heroes in position 4 I really, really like. Mm. So I'm oh, super wow. happy. Yeah, that's uh, that's a wide pool that you've got there. Mm. Um, so you're from Germany, one of the younger, I was actually going to ask how old you were until I looked at your Twitter and you've got it set up there, 19 years young, uh, one of the younger players in the Dota scene right now. Bait is your first team, correct? You, have you, have you played like even semi-competitively or anything like that before joining Bait? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, this is actually my first stack. Before that I was playing, uh, ESL Birmingham close qualifier and open qualifier, but this was just a random stack, like we just... With friends and we play together mm -hmm. but my first serious tech was uh bait for sure so how did you get in touch with dendi what's what's the story behind that with this being your very first like competitive squad mm, i think it was a story with me chrysalis and fishman like me and chrysalis play together always and then we changed our position five and it was fishman and i think fishman got asked by dendi and he was just recommending me and Chrysalis. Mm. <laughs> oh, he was recommending Chrysalis, and Chrysalis was recommending me, but I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> I see. So the three of you had this kind of history together, and then once Dendi got in touch, it was like, hey, the three of us are almost like a package. You know, we want to play together. We've got, we've got exactly. uh, some rapport, right? Exactly. Yeah. So how did those connections come about? Was that mostly just through uh, Pub Dota, or what's what's the story there? How long have you, the three of you, been gaming together? I know Crystalis for a long time now, I think like two years, but I have never heard of Fishman. I just know Fishman from Crystalis, so, but for me and Crystalis, uh, we know each other from pub public games. Okay, I see. And uh, so where, nothing, nothing special. <laughs> where, where are you rated right now uh, on the ladder, just out of curiosity? How, how's the old MMR grind treating you? Uh, right now, not a good. I was like 8.8k, <laughs> <laughs> now I'm like 8.1 like one or two weeks but uh, it's gonna come back like i'm lately i'm trying some patch <laughs> for really? four. yeah uh, i don't know i like the zero but uh it's uh, it's a spe special year i need to say like it's pretty hard to make it work but i feel like i'm winning more than i'm losing with it <laughs> huh well he's all i mean any skill shot heroes like that right if you can land the hooks yeah. uh you, you've got something no matter how weak he is but yeah, ever since they removed the ability to deny, Pudge has just felt a little bit, a little bit off of to me. I don't know, a little less intimidating. There's something about him that's just not quite there. Um, that's true. Wow. So, 19 years old, your first competitive Dota 2 team. I uh, I know that you're full time Dota right now. Were you doing any like university or studying? Like, I'm curious about. You know your your game plan as a young adult. Has it been all Dota for you? Are you like uh, in that that Sumail territory where you're 19 and you've been playing Dota hardcore for the better part of a decade? Or um, you know, uh, do you, do you ever think about backup plans outside of Dota, that kind of stuff? 
Uh, my backup plan right now is definitely I might go back to the school at September, but I'm not sure yet because of the timings. Like, mm. it's actually pretty hard to make school and competitive as well. So I need to look. But like, my dream was always to to achieve something in Dota, better said. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to do everything for it. So that's my first step, and I want to see how it goes. Yeah, I, I know it's hard to do both at the same time. I know like Zai is the one that always comes to mind in terms of playing competitively and then taking a break specifically to finish his degree and then just coming back like nothing even happened, you know, just picked up right right where he left off. And I, I don't know, as, as one that went to university, I couldn't imagine balancing the stress of being a full-time prof professional player also with a full course load. That sounds like a lot. Yep, true, that's true. Yeah. Um, Favorite heroes right now? I have to admit, um, as a caster, we use Liquipedia as a little bit of a crutch to try to learn more about players that we don't know that well. Your Liquipedia page is super fresh, my friend. It says that you play for bait, and uh, that's about it. So we don't even have like a top three heroes for you all time. What, what, are, what are your top three favorite heroes? I guess maybe we could go top three for playing in competitive and maybe top three for when you're solo queuing in pubs. I think my top three for pups are definitely Pango, Earth Spirit, and Shaker. And my top three competitive, that's a bit hard to say. I would say Earth Spirit, Shaker, and Rubik. Okay. All right. Those are some okay. good four heroes, dude. Uh, Pango is a bit special at position four. That's why I don't like it that much in competitive. But I'm going to try to make it work. I see. That's... Uh... You are a chaos creator, my friend. Those are some good chaos <laughs> heroes. Uh, true. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Um, what What's the drafting style like with Dendi? Like, uh, are, are there games where you get to suggest, hey, I think this hero is really good here, or hey, this is a situation where I think four Pango could work, or is it a little bit more like Dendi plays the director role and kind of suggests to you? You know, wh which way does that communication go? It's both ways. Uh, Dendi has a plan. And we are trying to adapt to his plan, but he's still asking us, what hero do we want to play? And then he's going to think about it, like, what, what does he want to draft? But a lot of times I can choose by myself what I want to play. But, like, 90% of the times I'm just, I just let Dandy do whatever. He like, mm -hmm. I'm open to play everything. I see. Trust my problem with my hero pool is also, like, especially with Pango, Earth Spirit, Shaq, or Rubik, I... I always say I don't care against what I play. <laughs> like, you can, I always say pick me first, whatever you want, I'm fine with that. Wow. Like, I don't feel pressured or anything else from specific heroes. Damn, dude. that's That's got to be like the dream teammate from a, uh, a a drafter perspective. Just like, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> just, just pick my shit. I'm not worried about getting countered. It's all good, buddy. Uh, it's always a good Rubik game when I'm playing Rubik. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, Rubik has felt particularly good right now. He is just like that well-rounded support that every time I see like a draft open with Rubik, I think I got no complaints. Um, thoughts about the recent changes to him with the the percentage now on Fade Bolt? Mm, I think he's worse on the laning, but better in the game right now. Mm. Like thirty-four percent is actually pretty big for some specific heroes like Morphling or who else has a big base damage pool. I think every hero with a high base damage pool is actually a problem if he's getting fate bolted. I see. So it, it's like a early game nerf, but late game buff kind of thing. Mm. The damage reduction, yes. But I think the damage himself, they actually buffed in early game plus the mana cost. So mm. I think they tried I think they tried to balance it. Like they, they nerfed the damage a bit, but they added the mana costs and the damage from the fate bolt itself. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. So it is, it is still a bit of a nerf overall, but uh, yep, yep. not across the board. Um, also curious about thoughts on Earth Spirit right now. This hero has felt a little bit hit or miss for me. He's so tanky and so mobile, and now with 7.27, it kind of feels like this, this patch could be okay for Earth Spirit now that kills are actually worth something, but the games that I've cast, uh, I have not seen a ton of Earth Spirit love. I'm not going to lie. Mm, I need to say I love this hero right now. Like, I play it every single day, like, five or six times. <laughs> but my problem is, in public games, I'm doing some weird stuff. Like, I almost rush Aghanims every single game. Oh. Uh, 
Rush Agonyms. Doesn't matter. Interesting. Yeah, it <laughs> doesn't matter what position I play. I'm just rushing Agonyms because I don't know. I feel like this Agonyms <laughs> is too expensive, but it's so good. You can self, so you can save yourself. You can save allies. You can kick enemies into you. You can do everything with Agonyms. It's true. I, I definitely think there's a surprise factor to that eggs too, because you don't see it that often. So people get caught off guard with, oh, wow, it saves people better than I remember. I, I feel like I always have that feeling when I come across it one out of a hundred games or whatever. <laughs> I was thinking about it a bit. And if like, especially if you play Coral Earth Spirit and you have Aghanims and you're playing like against Treen or against Puck, or some of these big ulties, you can just stone yourself and kick yourself out. Like, mm. doesn't matter if you're rooted or not. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's so. that's pretty handy. Um, yeah. What are the scenarios in which you're playing Core Earth Spirit? Is that like a three or a, a two? Or what's the what's the deal with that? I think Earth Spirit middle is okay. I'm not sure about Earth Spirit position three. I think huh. his laning is a bit too worse. In a two versus two. He needs to have a one versus one and he's decent or he needs to be position four. I, I see. I see. Okay. Fair enough. Fun hero to watch, though. Um, That's true. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, the, the mind of a caster. Um, so thoughts about 7.27. Are, are you pretty happy with the, the current state of Dota? Like, how does 7.26 and 7.27, where do they rank on your spectrum of Dota patches? I think I'm actually happy about it. I'm not sure yet in which direction it's going. Like, I feel like you can do booth waves now. You can AFK farm and you can just run at people and kill them. Mm -hmm. I feel like booth waves are good, but it always depends which team is starting to just run at you. And if people starting and running at you, you have you have a big problem if you'd want to try to AFK farm. <laughs> I feel like it's like a 50-50 right now. Like, yeah. A lot of times the drafting is going to like change the game. If you have two teams with an AFK draft, it's definitely going to be AFK farming. Mm -hmm. You can definitely do that with the Ancients on both sides, more gold for stacks, with everything. But you can also just run it. It does feel, I mean, initiation's important in every meta, right? But this one, it feels even more so. Like, I, I'm casting the Great American Rivalry, NA, SA Dota at least, it seems like these Void Spirit light heroes are just so popular. We'll see these lineups where it's Void Spirit, Ricky, you know, plus a Grim Stroke, and then like a Dark Seer or somebody with a Blink Dagger in the off lane that can also close gaps. And they're just, they're always there. It, it's almost like the enemies don't have a back line because of how easy they can just jump on whatever target they want. And I don't know that I've seen that sort of like mobility, initiation, single target pickoff prioritized just across the board as much as we are right now in this meta. Uh, that's true, but I also feel like these mobility heroes are like way stronger than stable heroes. Like if you think about it, like Storm Spirit, Void Spirit, Ember Spirit, and I don't know who else, it's like 10 times stronger than, as example, Zeus, Necro, Death Prophet. Mm -hmm. OD, like nobody of them has some mobility spells. And if you have a mobility spells, you can either jump the enemies or you can escape. And that's that's one of the biggest things I think. Yeah, yeah, but definitely. What's make them what makes them so strong? Fucking Ember Spirit, dude. That hero is <laughs> I, I mean, I don't even think I've cast that many Ember Spirit games because he's first banned in every single match. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Ember Spirit is something special. Yeah, yeah. But um, it does, I, I agree with what you said, though. It, it feels like it, a coin flip in some ways, but I'm glad that we're seeing this diversity in strategy where it isn't like just death ball winning every game. And we are seeing some teams commit to these really late game farm intensive draft. Um, I guess we're seeing a lot less of the lichen style. You know, we're not really seeing the zoo nearly as much yeah. as we were. And I'm Thanks, okay Scott. with that. I, I, I got a little tired of... Uh, you know, the Beastmaster, hey, let's just mass Necro book kind of thing. Uh, I need to say I liked actually the zoom meta because like my heroes are insanely good against these heroes. <laughs> <laughs> like Tango, Aghanim, Shaker. These two heroes are insanely good against them. So I was actually happy if people picking like mm -hmm. Beastmaster or what else against me. But yeah. I'm actually happy that it's all like it was it was insanely boring. Yes, definitely. 
I, I also feel like we've gotten to a pretty good point with neutral items. I'm curious what your take is on neutral items and how they've evolved over time. And for me, like I like that there's a gap now between tier four and tier five, where it feels like tier tier five items are truly sixty minute rollover. Okay, we're go this is like real late game now. Shit's about to get weird, and we have a little break before that moment comes. Um, how, how do you feel about neutrals? Were, were you happy when they were added into the game originally? I need to say I'm not playing Dota so long, so mm. I can't really say a lot about it. But I like it. Like it's it adds a lot of uh, weird things into the game, so it makes it special. <laughs> huh. Like back in the days when I started with Dota, like three years ago, I was never thinking about stuff like that. So I was just <laughs> taking the easy way. I was just playing Dota, and yeah, that's it. I see. I see. Well, but that's I good, think, though. You're like, enjoying the neutral it. Items. Yeah, true, true. But I also think, like, the neutral items, like, they're adding some... some... something... something weird. I don't know. It's like it's like you're playing uh, roulette or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you get the better items, you have a... you're ten times stronger sometimes. Like, I've seen a lot of people, if they get a flicker on some specific heroes or a timeless relic or something else or spell prism, Yep. They can actually turn games instantly. Yeah. No, you're totally so. right. And it's been suggested by multiple people at this point, like maybe in competitive or just in general, the items should be mirrored. So it could still be random every game, which items it is, but the teams get the same items. That way there's less of an advantage of one team getting a dice roll. And I, I guess the main counter argument I've heard to that is it's different items are broken on different heroes. So even though that like makes it even and less of a dice roll that way, it still doesn't necessarily make it any less broken or favorable for one team, right? Like, you, you may or may not have a hero that can use the Timeless Relic. If you do, great. If you don't, well, we're not that excited about it. So, I don't know. I, I, I see both sides of it. I'm not sure which way I stand. It, it Again, to me, something feels like it's it's been calibrated to the point where neutral items don't, don't bother me so much. Maybe it's because we've removed Infusion Rune. That was... <laughs> There, there were a couple pretty busted items in there. Uh, but I need to say, <clears throat> I don't think any of these items are actually like super broken or stronger than the other items. Uh, I, maybe the tier 5 items, they are like retarded. I've never seen them, I need to say. Like maybe <laughs> once or twice. <laughs> but like tier 4, tier 3, all of these items are good in some specific way. So I don't think one of these items is insanely broken or something else. I think they're all like the same. Yeah, I if think you're using them, right? they, they've gotten rid of the really busted ones. You remember uh, Helm yeah. of the Undying, where you got to live for an extra five seconds after you died? That was a uh, tier that's... three item. That one was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's that, that's true. Also, this fusion rune, or what, what was it called? Yeah, where you get all the runes. Gosh, I, I remember we we're talking about that on some podcast somewhere else, and it was like you could see the developers going, okay, so what's the scenario where this is broken? Where they get an apex and they have a morphling and they get the fusion rune. It's like, yeah, but what are the chances that actually happens? And there's only two charges on the fusion runes. And of course, it happens on the main stage at a giant event. It's like, wow, that might be the most broken shit I have ever seen. Because that was when Apex was percentage increase instead of flat 75. 75% instead of plus 75. So on Morphling, it was just it was just dumb. I mean, it was actually just dumb. Uh, that's, that's, I've seen that game. I can't remember which game, but... <laughs> I forget I now, that. too. They, dude, they all blur yeah. together so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, um, it's a bummer that there's no events right now. Have, have, you, um, have you ever played like on LAN with the team? Is that... No, I didn't. Oh shit, dude! That's uh, that's exciting though. That's like I'm I'm excited for you when events come back. That's gonna be cool. Are, are you stoked to play on the big stage, or are you nervous? I really have no idea what it's like to be in the head of someone. I've I've never played on the main stage. You know, I've only cast. So like, is that is that exciting? Like, does the idea of the crowd excite you and and like fill you with hype, or does it make you kind of nervous and like, oh god? I think. Nothing of them actually. I feel like I'm a super chill guy. Like I don't, <laughs> I'm a guy. I don't want to like hype up myself or mm. stress out myself. I just want to chill. I don't think I'm gonna stress up or hype myself for that. I'm pretty sure. Maybe after or before it, but like in the middle of it, I don't think I'm gonna think about. 
okay. I just want to play Dota and then after or before I can do it. <laughs> Damn. But Dude, that's I wise as hell. That's like yeah. that's some serious composure right there. That's I remember one time I was uh talking to Eternal Envy, I think at one of the summits, maybe Summit 2, and he said something like the best moments of life are when you're playing Dota and you're in that box on the stage and you're so immersed in the game that you've basically forgotten that you're playing Dota. You've forgotten about the stakes. You've forgotten about the stage. You're just in the game. You're just like living your hero and your farming pattern and your rotations. And it's like that zen of being able to block out all that other noise and just channel the Dota that is in front of you. And what you just described very much reminds me of, of what he described. Yeah. I think I would do the same, I'm sure. Yeah. I, at least I'm going to try it. I don't know what's going to happen if I'm on stage, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try it. Well, sure. It's a it's a learning experience. I uh, Yeah, I, I remember the first, um, I think it was like the KL Major in, in 2018. It was the first time I cast in a stadium where it was full of like people and it was big and I could hear my voice echoing in the stadium while I was casting. In the first game, I was actually struggling to breathe a little bit. No, it's like the, <laughs> these weird nerves kick in where your body just reacts to the pressure. It's it's hard to explain, but um, anyway, that's that's really cool, man. I'm God. I hope events come back soon. How are you handling the COVID stuff? Have you been uh, been enjoying the lockdown? Just just playing Dota, I guess, huh? Uh, 50 50 Like it's 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 nice to just play Dota, but it's also a bit boring. Like to not mm-hmm. do anything. Like I want to travel around to do anything, <laughs> but it doesn't work. Yeah, that's a bit sad. Yeah, uh, definitely. overall, it's fun. Do you feel like it's been harder to get to know your teammates and like mesh with this new team without being able to play on LAN or boot camp or do anything? Like, do you feel like something gets lost a little when you're forced to only play remotely with one another? Hmm. Not sure yet because I don't know the other side. Like, <laughs> I don't know how the, I don't know how the feeling is if, if Dandy or someone else is sitting right next to me. Okay, fair so. enough. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, I mean, has it felt like the communication has, has been lacking or has it felt like the, the team has been able to, to compensate for it? I mean, these are, these are just fucking wild times in general, man. This stuff's, like, unprecedented for our generation. Communication-wise, it's actually pretty good in our team. It's just, like, the experience. Like, I feel like if we have more experience, we're going to get, like, ten times better and increasing our strength way more than right now. Like, mm-hmm. it's like we have two or three people without any experience. Well, actually, I think too. Me and Chrysalis, we don't have any experience in competitive Dota, mm-hmm. like high tier Dota, and we need to like adapt to that. Like we're learning pretty fast, but it's it's actually a bit tricky. To, like if you don't have somebody right next to you telling you what to do mm-hmm. or how you can do it, so I think we're learning a lot. But I think it's gonna get better if you're sitting in a boot camp or sitting in a LAN. I'm right. sure. Yeah, I mean, it, Dota is, I mean, part of the game is just being able to learn. Every time a new patch comes out, it is a, a race to see which team can learn it the fastest and figure out what's the most broken shit and win some quick games. So, I mean, that's, <laughs> the learning never stops. You know, the frog is uh, is always keeping things in flux. Um, any thoughts about what Dota is missing right now? Any anything that you'd like to see in the game or change anything irking you? Is there anything in those patch notes that you open up and look for? Like any hero changes, any buffs, any specific mechanics that you know, like really grind your gears? Not really. The only thing I was a bit uh, questionable is like the competitive scene about Dota. Mm. I feel like there's like, there's like no real structure. But I'm not sure yet. Like I don't know how to build a how the competitive scene in Dota is correctly, but I was playing like Counter Strike, uh, Counter Strike C- CSGO, mm-hmm. Fortnite, Apex Legends. I was playing everything for a bit at least, and I was talking to the competitive people there, and I felt like they have a they have built it up the competitive scene, and I feel like in Dota it's not it's not really there. I feel like because Valve is like not organized organized. I can't speak anymore. <laughs> <laughs> organized. I don't know how to say it. Organized. That. Organized, exactly. Thanks. Uh, they don't organize their own tournaments. And as a player, you don't see any structure, I feel. Yeah. Like it... I was checking some Fortnite, and I even have the competitive seat in the game. You have a button, you can click on eSport, and then you can join any tournament. Like in Dota, you need to go on some 
other yeah. websites, then click on this link, click on this link, do yeah. this. It's it's like piecemealed together, and it there's good and bad parts of it, right? And I, I'm a bit of a biased source because I'm on the other side of I, I run events as a tournament organizer. So I like working in Dota because Valve gives us a shitload of freedom compared to every other esport. Basically, it's a, do you have sponsors to pay for it? All right, do whatever the hell you want. You know, Midas Mode was basically one giant exper or experiment to see how much we could torture the players before they would quit playing in our tournament. Um, and Valve <laughs> sort of wanted to at least watch to see how that would go and how the VR Roche, Roche would work and how we'd integrate all this kind of stuff. And it's cool that we were able to just pitch them an idea and they said, oh, yeah, sure, here you go. Here's access to the API. Oh, yeah, sure, we can push that update for you. We can add some features to custom custom modes so you guys can do this. Um, I don't think Riot would have done that for us. I don't think Blizzard would have done that for us. Um, but you're right. We're lacking a specific kind of infrastructure and like a mobility and a, a true Tier 2 scene. And every time I complain about this, people remind me that, hey, we had the regional leagues coming. And that is the tier two scene that we've all been kind of complaining about has been missing, at least in theory. And now with COVID and that being part of our D DPC, that's supposed to start in what a month, two months. Um, I don't know. I, I it's uh, I don't have the answers either, but I completely agree with you that I, I think we are severely lacking in opportunities for tier three, tier two players to like, work their way up and, you know, try to break into the tier one scene, especially in North America. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know how it is in Europe for you, but I feel like there are no new players coming into Dota in North America. The average age in NA is, you know, 30. <laughs> like all the young kids in, in NA are playing Fortnite and other games. Nobody's, nobody's getting into MOBAs. That's true. I, I mean, my problem about NA especially was like, I was playing some games there. And I feel like it's super hard to improve on this. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people, <clears throat> they don't want to try out things. They're always saying like, okay, this is right. You need to do this to everybody. And if someone is not doing it, they want to report them or they want to blame <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> and that's, I don't know. I felt like you can't improve on this region that good. Like if you play EU, you have like, I don't know, eight, nine, or sometimes even 10 pro players in one team. And you can just improve by pubs. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I was playing like 10 or 20 games in A in a row. And I felt like I can't improve. I don't know how to what to think about this game. Yeah. And this, the scrim culture is terrible also. There, there's just not enough teams. And it's now that feedback loop of there aren't enough teams to scrim. So that makes teams not want to form there because there's nobody to scrim. So if you're a team in NA, you're like, you're, you're scrimming against South American teams playing through lag. And it's, it's just not good. It, it's really... Uh, and I don't know what the fix is because NA is one of the most expensive regions to operate from like team costs to salary costs, like running events and all of it. America is expensive. There's a lot of other parts of the world where we could run events like Eastern Europe or Southeast Asia where it's the same formula and the cost of operation is a lot cheaper. And there's way more fans that will buy tickets and buy merch and show up to the stream and be hype and engage with the sponsors and, you know, the whole thing. That's true. Uh, I mean... I think Europe is also super expensive, at least Germany, France, and the other countries. But I'm not sure. And A is something special, I need to say. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But Germany has a, a pretty good Dota player base, I think, right? Like, you guys have your own little German German community. of like I see a lot of German community sites and, like, German-only content. I think they do. Like, I talk, I talk so, to some people in German. Like I, I have connections to some to some German people, but I'm not really active there. Like I don't want to have any good connections into the German scene because mm. I just want to focus on my own. That's right now yeah. my plan. <laughs> I want to focus on my own and and on BA. So yeah. Do you uh do you stream at all? Have you ever thought about uh, dipping your toe in for a little bit of content creation yourself? Uh, yep. Right now I'm streaming actually a lot, but I'm not sure yet. How is it going? I feel like <laughs> if I, I feel like if I stream, I have like an input lag or something, like zero point one sec or something. But I'm not sure yet. Is it my PC or is it my internet? And I'm trying stuff out. <laughs> or is it your brain? Is it mental? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> this might be this might be true as well. I mean, I 
I don't necessarily feel it like my computer's lagging, but I almost always feel like I play better off stream than on stream. You know, just knowing that people are watching, knowing that I feel the need to like justify mistakes and explain what I'm doing and like look at Twitch chat. It's just an extra pressure that distracts me a little bit. And there is definitely something to that. It's it's not quite the same than just playing by yourself and being in your own world. But that's true. It also depends, like what what position I'm playing for. Some like if I play some weird shit, uh, I was trying out some <laughs> jungle strats. It didn't work out well, but <laughs> I felt I felt super chill when I was streaming and I was playing like Enigma jungle for like 20 minutes AFK, <laughs> and then I came out with like blink dagger like, BKB and yeah, I destroyed everything. But yeah, it's it what? always depends, like what hero, what position you play when you stream. Yeah, that, that can be fun though. I, I always, I, I always try to encourage everyone to stream more in Dota because I feel like our viewership breakdown is really weird. Like we get a lot of viewers for turn, like big tournaments. We get very few viewers for tier two and below tournaments. We have this handful of select people that get a stupid amount of viewers, like Bulldog and Dendi, Sing Sing, Gork. You know these kind of people, and then. There's all of these other streams of people like yourself. I always think of the Ferev stream and all of these other pro players. I they have like 200 concurrent viewers, 300 concurrent viewers. Like uh, Excalibur, he's another one. He's been grinding for years, putting out all this great content, barely breaks 1,000 viewers. I, I don't quite understand the Dota dynamic of Twitch viewership. We, we have these like allegiances to content creators, and everyone's very loyal. And we, uh, I don't know, we need to spread the love a little bit, you know? Guys, get on, get on Twitch and follow this guy. Five up Dota. He's at 3.2K followers. We can fix this. I also saw, like, I'm not sure, but I was looking at some Fortnite streamers, like, six months ago. Uh, not going to lie, but if Gork is a Fortnite streamer, he could be a millionaire. I'm not going to yeah, lie. <laughs> I think you're right. Like, <laughs> like, I was checking out. He has, like, I don't know, he has, like, 10K views average. And he has maybe like two or four K subscription. And if he is a Fortnite streamer, he had like twenty K subscriptions. This is actually insane. Yeah. Oh yeah. I also feel like the viewership is not like compared to Fortnite or other games, the viewership in Dota is a bit weird sometimes. Yeah, like, no, definitely. Um, I've talked to a lot of people about that sub differential of like the average sub number to viewer number in Dota is fucked. We have like trained our community to expect everything for free. Like, you know, Rich Campbell, the, the host that he does World of Warcraft stuff, he's up to like 9K subs on Twitch for World of Warcraft. He gets like a thousand viewers a stream. He's like yeah. nine to one sub to viewer ratio. And then in Dota, it's nine to one the other way. Like, what, what, is, what is happening? <laughs> it's very yeah. strange. I, I'm not sure why, though. I guess I was always looking at that one. And this, it's actually weird. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't. I really don't know either. I I can confirm that is it's a a pretty common trend across everyone that I've talked to that uh, that streams, and I I still haven't gotten to the root of it either. If you figure it out, please let me know because uh, I'm quite curious. <laughs> I will. I will. Don't worry. Yeah, but um, I don't know. Dendi told me that he feels like the opposite is happening in CIS than what I described in North America, where he said that there's a lot of young players in CIS that are getting into the game and there's a whole new wave of players. There's a young generation that's up and coming. And he said, he's like really not worried about the longevity of Dota in that regard, in terms of player base. Um, any thoughts on that? Like, have you observed a, a trend one way or the other or, or anything along those lines? I also think the CIS region is like ten times bigger than NA in Dota, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why. But Probably. I don't, I don't think the NA region is that big in Dota. Not it's anymore, like... a... especially now the TI is not even in NA. I think that was yeah. the the straw that broke the camel's back. Oh, that's true. Yeah, but I think like the CIS, the CIS region is actually pretty big, so I can also imagine a lot of young people playing there. I guess there's also a lot of TOs that do like audience events there between Star Ladder and We Play and No, yeah, probably. I've never heard of it. Another epic. I can imagine this. Yeah. All right, man. Well, uh, we've got about thirty minutes here. Anything else you want to get off your chest? Anything else you want to talk about? Anything grinding your gears in the Dota space before we uh, wrap this thing up? Uh not really. <laughs> yeah. All right. Fair enough. Uh, I got one final question, though. Uh, five Up Dota. Where does the name come from? What's the story behind this namesake? 
Oh, dude, I was like 15 years old or 16. Uh, okay, so three years ago. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, I remember it. I was like 4K MMR back in the days. And my dream was it to become 5K MMR. And I was naming myself 5UP. And at the same time, I was drinking 7 but I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure anymore, but it's something with 4K MMR or 5K MMR. <laughs> okay, well, now, and for context, though, there was a point where 5K MMR was, like, the hot shit, you know? That was, like, pinnacle peak Dota, so I I'm with you, I you know? I mean, it's been a while. What is what is the, the record now? Is 11K? Is that the... Is that what's pushing the envelope? Something like that? How far we've come? I think 11k is right now the highest or was the highest i'm not yeah that's uh it's very unique though five up dota i like that good on you for picking something unique so that all your all your social media is unified you know just type in five up dota and you'll find this guy everywhere youtube twitter <laughs> twitch that's right a branding I'm genius actually... <laughs> that's true i am actually really lucky with this name <laughs> i was trying five up but it didn't work <laughs> <laughs> It kind of looks like SUP, though. The first time I saw it, I almost read it like Leet Speak, you know, SUP Dota. It's like, wow, I got a real, yeah. a real cool guy here. So that's. Yeah, a lot of people say it's SUP. I don't know why, but it fits uh, it's, in. It's Dota. It fits in well with bait because we're, we're still dealing with that issue where a lot of people say B8. And when they ask me, I'm like, I had the same problem, but it's, it's bait. Just say bait. You don't have to actually say out the uh, letters. <laughs> I, think you can, I think you can say booth. Both work, but uh, I've been yeah. encouraging people to say bait. Yeah. I was actually always saying B8. <laughs> 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 not not right, well, going to lie. <laughs> well, maybe I don't know as well as I thought. I, did. I was talking to one of our, our video editors, and when I asked him, he gave me that response of like, what do you think it is? Our logo is a fishing hook. I was like, okay, it's bait. All right. he, like, I got, he's German as well, so I got one of those moments of, okay, all right, all right, buddy. It's, uh, you know, sometimes <laughs> Germans can be very direct. And, uh, you know, it, as an American, it just it comes across. It's like just a very different way of communicating. I, I always like visiting Germany. I don't know if you know Sir Action Slacks, but we always make fun of him because every time he goes to Germany, he gets shushed when he's in public because he talks so fucking loud. He said last time he was in Germany and went out to dinner after like 40 minutes into a meal, the people on the table next to them were leaving. And the guy came over and put his hand on his shoulder and just said, you know, you don't have to entertain the entire room and then just walked away. <laughs> <laughs> and we were joking. It's just like, wow, that might be one of the most German things I've ever heard. Just very, like, not rude or mean, just very direct, like, hey, buddy, maybe you should consider shutting up. <laughs> uh, that's German. That's German. That's true. <laughs> All right, man. Well, the, this was a lot of fun. I, uh, I look forward to watching the future games on bait. Best of luck to you. The beginning of your professional Dota career. I hope it's... Uh, it's all uphill from here, man. I'm excited to, to watch the future matches. Yep. Thank you very much. Yep. All right. So, folks, you know where his social media is. No excuses here. Five Up Dota. Get at him on Twitch. Watch the stream. Support. Of course, follow the uh, Bait Esports social media as well. Bait Esports GG, VK, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. We are everywhere. Thank you so much for watching, boys and girls. And we'll catch you next time on the Baitcast. Bye-bye.